that as I mentioned, um, we are going to be building these all from scratch uh, this afternoon, so we can make sure everybody um, is, is clear as to how all of this is working. Let's go over to the mesh menu in Grasshopper and go ahead and drop down a mesh plane object. Now, by default, you can see that the um, mesh plane, right, it has under W, 10 faces, H, 10 faces, and B, the rectangle describing the boundary um, of the plane is set to a width of 20 and a height of 20. All right, so a couple things that we know right off the bat are that we need to define a rectangle here, right? So I'm going to just make a note rectangle there. And here I need a slider for the width and the height. Okay, this is the width and height face count. So let's go ahead and drop down a slider from our params input. Now I've made a slider, an integer slider, um, that I like to just drop down right into the file. Um, if you haven't done that uh, in your grasshopper, let's go ahead and just set up a number slider from scratch. Now I'm going to call this my width face count. Double click it. Set the n to a minimum of one face, and I don't know, a maximum of 10, for instance. Now, whenever I did that, we can see that we only have one face in the width, and we still have the 10 in the height. So I'm going to just copy and paste this down and change the name from width to height. So here we have one face in the width, one face in the height. And if I change this slider, increase the number, we can see that now I have 6 by 4 by 5 by 6, etc. Right, so this is indicating the number of basic elements used to construct this mesh, uh, mesh plane, exactly. Um, all right, now if we want to control, for instance, how large this uh, mesh plane is, we need to define a rectangle. So I'm just going to go over to my curve menu and drop down a primitive rectangle. And here we can see that the rectangle has an input for x and y. Go ahead and drop down a slider for that as well. I'm going to say this is my x dim my y dim, my x size, y size. I'm going to go ahead and hook that up to x, y. We can see this guy right down here. Now, editing this, I'll change this to 1, maybe uh, 4, for instance. Now I'm going to kick the precision down a little bit because I don't need it to have so many decimal places. I'll repeat that for y bring this down to 1. Now, if I scale this up, right, I can see I'm at 4 by 4. And if I drop that into B, my mesh will now conform to the size that I've indicated here. So the width is 4 and the height is 4. So we now have a nice control to be able to, in a parametric way, control the width, the height, and the face count. Now because I want this to be a square plane, I'm just going to get rid of one of these sliders and share it to x and y. Okay, and this will be my width plus height. Great. If anybody has any problems um, getting that to work, just uh, be sure to send a line over to, to the message window and uh, Gil will be able to assist you with that. All right, great. So we have this mesh output now. Okay. Now, to go a little bit further, let's take a look then at what the parts are of a mesh. Now, we were saying that a mesh is composed of vertices, right? 
faces, edges, and that the faces are made up of the vertices indicated in, um, in a particular um, sequence or order. So from the mesh menu, we're going to jump over here to uh, analysis, and we're going to take a look at some of the functionality that we have in here. Again, this is really so that we can understand um, not only how to make a simple mesh, right, but how to take it apart and learn a little bit more about it. So the M out here indicates the actual mesh. The A is the area of the mesh, in this case, mesh plane. So I'm going to take my mesh into M. And out of here, you'll notice that I now have V, which are the vertices. These are the points that you can see whenever you uh, select this. F which are the faces. So you can see these are the commands that we uh, actually saw in the slide, right? C, we'll get into this later, but you can actually embed color information into a mesh, which is really exciting, especially for um, use with 3D printing. And then N, the normals of the mesh, which we'll get into a little bit more later as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at V. Now, if you remember, from um, the introduction to parametric design with Grasshopper, if you guys um, all participated with that or were able to review. Um, from the vector menu under point, there is an object called point list. This is a really handy um, object to use. Its whole um, kind of purpose in life is to just display point information. So I'm going to take the V, which are the vertices of the mesh, right into P. Now, this point list display requires a slider um, to specify the font size. So we're just going to drag a slider into the scene and connect it. Here we can see now the indices of all the vertices in the, um, the mesh with their corresponding position, right? So sorry, these are the indices of the vertices in the mesh. Uh, so we can see the, both the vertex and its index. Now, if I go to params and I drop down a panel, um, we can display here, right, and see that these are, in fact, the point coordinates. These are the uh, coordinates of each vertex. So this is different um, in the uh, different than what you're seeing in the viewport. Here we're seeing the indices, um, and here we're seeing the uh, coordinates. So let's drop another panel in and take a look at what's coming out of F. And this is where it gets really interesting. Let me zoom into the file here. I'm going to leave this up. Because what we're seeing here are commands. And the Q, again, is the um, signifier of what type of basic element we're working with. Here, we're working with all quads making up this mesh plane. So we have Qs. We have 0, 1, 5, 4, 1, 2, 6, 5, right? These are the indices that we see. And whichever indices go together, those are the ones that will be used to construct the basic element. 